Today's demanding academic research needs sophisticated computing power. What if there was a way to put spare computing power at a university to good use by making it available to others? If we can pull this computing power together, we will be able to speed up research work. That's exactly what the European Grid Infrastructure does. With the Grid, this network of computer servers at universities across Europe supports a wide range of cutting-edge research. Welcome to Stories from the Grid. In this episode, the Cone Snail. The Cone Snail, a seemingly peaceful creature living at the bottom of the ocean, until it strikes. Biologists believe that its paralyzing sting could one day be turned into a new type of local anesthetic. The grid lends a helping hand in finding out how, and it all starts with proteins. Proteins, uh, they have important functions in our body, in our cells. They break molecules, they make molecules, so they are small factories, they are molecular machines, basically. The sting of the cone snail seems to have a cocktail of small proteins called peptides that makes it quite the efficient hunter. The cone snail uh, approaches its prey and has a harpoon which protrudes into the prey's body and administers this cocktail of peptides. And this leads the prey to both contract or uh, is completely paralyzed. To understand how this toxic sting can be turned into a useful painkiller, we must first understand what pain actually is. All sensors in our body are transmitted to and from the brain via neurons. The venom of uh, the cone snail has peptides that can uh, disrupt this circuitry, these neurons. They do so by attaching themselves to openings in the communication channels in the neurons, sort of like a plug. Once attached, no signal can be transmitted to the brain and we stop feeling the pain. We can look at the three-dimensional structure of this peptide and we can see how it binds to the channel. By looking at that, we can also maybe re-engineer the peptides to make it bind better, and we do this by NMR. It stands for nuclear magnetic resonance. NMR is a technique that people might know from hospitals where we have MRI scanners. So in hospital, we put people into large magnetic fields and we make pictures of them. NMR is a physical method, so we use strong magnetic fields, and in, in our lab, we put molecules, proteins, into the magnet, and instead of making pictures, we measure distances between atoms. So if you know all the distances between the atoms, you can try to reconstruct a three-dimensional object, which is the protein. So when we want to calculate 3D structures of proteins, we have to repeat the process many, many, many times. So it means that we are looking for the needle in a haystack. And we are going to do not one calculation, but thousands or tens of thousands of calculations. And that's where the grid is becoming uh, very important. Instead of doing those calculations on one single computer on your desktop, which will take a very long time, from days to weeks, depending on what you are doing, you are splitting the work into small packages and you send those all out on the grid. And you get your answer within a couple of hours. So, to wrap it all up, the venom of the cone snail is a peptide. This peptide works as a plug in the communication channels that transport pain signals to our brain. To make it into a useful painkiller, we must get to know its three-dimensional structure. To find out what the structure looks like, the peptide is bombarded with electromagnetic waves. This technique is called NMR. It allows us to measure the distances between the individual atoms in the peptide, but it doesn't reveal the actual three-dimensional structure. Computations are then needed to transform this information into the three-dimensional structure of the cone snail venom. This is done by sending thousands of calculations to the grid, a network of computer servers distributed across Europe. The available servers take care of the calculations, and the results are sent back to the researcher. In the long run, this knowledge could lead to new local anaesthetics used in hospitals. Now we know how grid computing has helped with unravelling the secrets of the cone snail toxins. What more could be possible in the future? Computing could be used instead of experiments to basically map the social life of proteins. Which protein does speak to which protein? And this is linked directly to disease. Very often in many diseases what goes wrong is that the communication is not working properly anymore. And this is something that we are studying in a computer trying to predict. So being able to predict what goes wrong might give us the means to correct what goes wrong and select the best existing drugs to, to target this problem. The immense computing power of the grid has proven to be an invaluable tool for the life sciences. Want to see how the grid is useful in other fields of research? Then join us next time for another episode of Stories from the Grid.